Hello and welcome to the Hellraiser blog. Um, today's blog, guess which fight going to cover? Titan Fury versus Alexander Usyk. Uh, massive, massive, massive fight. Biggest fight we've had in heavyweight boxing for a long time. Taking place uh, in Saudi Arabia on Saturday. Um, huge event, massive fight. Um, really excited, looking forward to, to watching it. And of course, I've not been just because I haven't been doing the blogs doesn't mean that I stopped thinking about boxing 24 7. So, uh, my thoughts on Usyk versus Fury, and I'll give you a prediction for it. Um, funnily enough, I was not going to do a blog, but then I ended up spending so much time explaining to people that were asking what was I going to do a blog that. I thought actually it waste less time by actually just doing one and then people asking to say yeah it's on YouTube have a look so here we go um, so what are the uh, the main factors in this fight I think obviously um, Fury his height his height and his reach and his size basically um, I think dictates that uh, Usyk can't afford to, to stand in close for too long. Obviously, I don't think Usyk's going to go fight him at long range because that would be a massive advantage for Tyson Fury. Tyson Fury, who you probably will know if you watched this blog previously, I made his first ever pro fight for. Anyway, so Fury's got this massive long uh, reach advantage and uh, I think the, the, the blueprint for the fight for him would be to keep it at long range for as long as possible and just keep racking the rounds up and try to kill the pace of the fight. Try and break the rhythm and slow it down and uh, not turn it into a uh, too much of a uh, uh, close quarter battle. Fury's actually very good at leaning on the opponents and things like this, but... As we saw with in both fights between Alexander Usyk and Anthony Joshua, um, Usyk is actually pretty good at close range in, in close, and it's very difficult to to claim, to grab, to smother, um, and to lean on to. He he has little tricks that he employs to create space where where they're squashed together. He'll open that that space there. And get shots into cavities that you didn't even know existed till sort of quarter of a second earlier. And so, I don't think that Fury. I mean, I, I could understand if Fury would want to fight him at close range from the point of view that he could lean on him more and use his body weight to to control Usyk. But I mean, Anthony Joshua. I'd say Anthony Joshua is probably a bigger puncher than than Fury, and uh, he wasn't able to control Usyk at close range. Usyk buzzed around him uh, in both fights, uh, particularly in the first one, but in, in the second one as well, he, he buzzed around him and, and Joshua was always half a step behind from catching him. And even when he did uh, manage to engage, Usyk was too fast. His punches were like, bam, 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 bam. And Joshua, I think, um, couldn't couldn't go with, with, with Usyk, he couldn't last, um, although he did a lot better in the second fight, I thought his tactics were a lot better in the second fight, but um, it's funny because there, there, there was quite a few people who were sort of saying as if, um, matter of factly, oh, all that Joshua has to do is, get, no, is engage with him and keep him at close range, that was probably the best tactic that Joshua could, could employ. But it certainly wasn't the case of as soon as he got in close, he was beating Usyk. And I think there's some of that here with Tyson Fury, where people are sort of thinking, well, the size is so so much different. Um, surely that is too much. for. I'm not at all convinced that it is. I think that Usyk actually, uh, in close, he does have lots of assets and lots of strengths that actually will work in his favour. I think if, if I was to be uh, in the corner, say, for Usyk, I would be saying you, 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 you've got to get outside, uh, obviously, the, the, the southpaw uh, front foot, outside of uh, Tyson Fury's front foot. I think Usyk boxed 
going to box out for uh, I know Fury switches but I think he's going to box Orthodox here um, and I think Usyk needs to get his foot outside of Tyson Fury's front foot and keep peppering uh, shots over and changing level bending his knees ducking at the waist so he, he he's not a, a stagnant target um, so Fury and, and that's a way of keeping Fury off balance throughout the fight and I'm sure that's what he would have prepared to do, how he would have trained. And now we're going to see a, a situation where Fury is almost encouraged to fight at short range. Because I think if he if he goes at long range, uh, Usyk will simply refuse to engage at very long range. He'll just move. And he'll try and draw leads from Fury, uh, slip inside come out with these fast bursts of punches and they're, they're quite heavy punches as well that he throws so so quickly and then he will as he did against Joshua not step out of range step round and start attacking from a different angle and then come back round again and Joshua w was sort of cumbersome he was moving but actually when you see Joshua fighting in the flesh he's not actually a slow fighter it's just that <laughs> Usyk is so fast that um it's difficult to keep up. It was difficult to um, to establish and to control the pace of things. And I think Fury might well struggle as well. Um, the biggest obstacle that I have with Fury is his last performance, which against uh, Francis Ngannou, which was so bad. It was so poor. He, w I mean, he definitely was not well prepared, for sure. Um, you could tell that firstly from what he looked like walking into the ring. But also the poor, the performance was so poor, was so dreadful. And I find it very difficult, um, certainly say from a betting point of view, to have confidence in someone who their last performance was like that. Also fighters, when their weight goes from up there, they bring it right down. Um, sometimes they may feel better in themselves. They've come down in weight, well done. But they're not the same fighter. Certainly not the first time they compete at the new weight again when they go down. And we've seen fighters like Roy Jones Jr. I mean, many fighters over the years who have tried to go up and then come back down. Um, they struggle. And, and Fury definitely, you know, he piled on a lot of weight. Um, and to me, it's not just the weight. It's also the, the mindset. If you allowed yourself to, to dip so low in terms of performance. OK, it probably gave him a kick up the backside to go and train hard. And I'm sure he will have trained hard for this fight. But... Um, so I think we'll see uh, a better Tyson Fury. And also the challenge, you know, I think if you're fighting someone who's having their first pro fight, I think we, we can sort of cut him some slack Tyson Fury because how does he motivate himself to fight someone who's having the, their first fight? Um, you know, it, it, it probably came as a shock to him how easily Ngannou was finding him uh, with, with big shots. And it's probably too late by then, but if he'd have known how, how good a fist fighter Ngannou was, which he wasn't brilliant, but he was better than what I think we all anticipated. Um, and if he um, had known how, how the quality of Ngannou, he probably would have trained harder. But I think he just thought, you know, there's just no way. And really there wasn't any way that he should be able to, to compete with Tyson Fury. But Tyson Fury being in bad shape, Ngannou being in very good shape, um, Ngannou being a lot better as a fist fighter than what I think anyone had anticipated. I remember when Conor McGregor came from MMA and boxed Mayweather, and uh, his fists were, he's, he's known as a striker in MMA, but his boxing was just like really low level. So... <clears throat> I think that might have encouraged Tyson Fury to think, well, you know, another guy coming from MMA, same story. But Ngannou, to me, looks more like a boxer who tried MMA than an MMA guy trying boxing. Um, anyway, so moving forward to this fight, I think... Um, Tyson will be in better shape, that's, I have no doubt about it. And also the motivation, because he's fighting for the, all the belts. He's fighting a guy who he knows, um, and he's beat Joshua twice. So we have proof already of the, the quality that um, uh, 
uh, Usyk brings. And I think um, if if uh, the best that Tyson Fury can be turns up and the best Usyk can turn up, I think we're in for a real treat because these are two really good quality fighters. And I'm certain, I'm absolutely 100% certain that Fury's performance will be better on Saturday, tomorrow, than it, it was against Ngannou. That said, um, like I said, I find it very difficult to have confidence in, in Fury because of the, the, the poor performance last time. And also the fact that Fury, I mean, he beat Klitschko at the end of his career. He beat Wilder, who really was unproven uh, at a high level. And since then has been beaten by Joseph Parker, who is not like a top, top level guy. He Well, since his win against Wilder, he's probably a, a higher level, but he's he's not really someone you'd consider sort of top three in the, the world. Um, now we've got a situation where we're, we're going to see uh, Tyson Fury tested against Alexander Usyk, who I do believe is a... I mean, he, he made... I think a big part of Josh, Anthony Joshua's problem the first time they boxed is his tactics were so far from what they needed to be. I mean, whoever guided him that way, I don't know what their intention was or what their, their game plan was. But the actual, the outcome um, and the, uh, the the fight, I mean, it was really frustrating. To, to go into the fight, I mean, that, that would never have been my game plan, what he had. But then to go into the fight, and it's a 12-rounder, and after two or three rounds, you could see this is wrong. He, he's on to a loser here. He's going to get a beating. And he just kept rolling out more of the same. And I think the fact that, he didn't that, that Anthony Joshua didn't adapt, didn't change tactics. I think it it made the defeat heavier than what it would have been if he had been able to to, to change his tactics. The second fight, he did change tactics, and I actually think the the tactics that Anthony Joshua employed in the rematch in the second fight, I think they were as good as Anthony Joshua's tactics could be. And even though that he implemented his tactics very well, that didn't mean that, oh, suddenly he wins the fight. He lost, quite clearly. But he came closer than in the first fight. And um, I think he could walk away with the fir first fight. I think he'd walk away really uh, bedazzled and uh, I would imagine quite, quite a like, spirit-crushing defeat. The second time, at least he came. He was competitive, and he did land some shots, and he did push Usyk at times, and he, he gave a much better account of himself. So um, now we're going to see Tyson Fury fighting the guy that bedazzled Anthony Joshua the first time. I think we can take it as read that Alexander Usyk is the best opponent that Tyson Fury has ever boxed. And also, you've got Alexander Usyk at a point where he's probably coming up to his peak now. It's not like some guy who's on the slide who, who's shot. Um, he's small for a heavyweight in in natural size, but he seems to have evolved and developed as a heavyweight. If he has any loss, any weaknesses, Alexander Usyk, I think we have to say it's probably the body, because I think Joshua scored well to the body. And Daniel Dubois, who was sparring with my uh, Moses Jolly recently, Daniel Dubois uh, definitely looked to me like he landed solidly to the body and hurt Usyk to the body. And I think if I was preparing to fight against Usyk, Usyk's head moves like this constantly. In fact, it doesn't move like that. It moves like that. It's very unpredictable. You can't um, really know where he's going to go next. So to try and land single shots on his head uh, very difficult so if I was in the corner of Tyson Fury I think I would be more use your length to keep him right outside use the jab probably don't aim at his head because like I say this head movement which is so unpredictable and difficult to actually nail him with a shot and you see guys 
stepping into the jab against Dusik and getting countered. So I think better to just not exactly pull with the jab, but not put too much commitment behind it. And if you are going to throw a stiff jab, throw it low, throw it to the chest, because then if he slips, you can slip the head, but if you aim for the chest, it's a much bigger target and you're likely to hit him. And you can preserve the distance between Tyson Fury and Alexander Usyk by nailing him to the chest. And I think that's what he's got to do. If um, he can maintain that distance and those straight shots, and I think... Um, Probably you could say this for both fighters, but specifically, I think because Tyson Fury has the longer reach, he's going to throw those straight shots, and Usyk will come underneath. And if you can feint, but I think Usyk can also do this to Tyson because Tyson Fury actually ducks his head quite low under shots. If you watch him box, if you watch carefully, the punch can comes, and he's not scared to bend down and bend his knees and bend at the waist and get his head under the shot. And if you can predict when he's going to do that. But both of them can do this. They, they, you, if you, so you're coming in, and rather than throwing at the face, you can almost exaggerate. So you throw over, knowing that that way they are going to duck underneath. And when they duck underneath, you line them up and try and hit them with an uppercut. And my feeling is, because Usyk's shorter, it's easier for him to sort of make it look like he's ducking underneath, but then move his head outside of the central axis. So he's not in the middle where the, the, most of the shots come. Fury's a bigger guy, he's a bit more cumbersome. And if Usyk can get his feet close enough and then throw the straight shots high, so Fury decides to come under, then you can bring those shots there coming up and, and, and try and nail him. Um, okay, so look, I, mean, I think we could go on all day looking at the different uh, permutations that could happen. But what, what are we looking at? So the, Fu the Fury is the favourite, the betting favourite. I actually think the value here, I think there's two bets that are valuable. I think you've got a win on points for Alexander Usyk, who's odds against. And I think um, based on the information that we've got, it's, it's very difficult. I find it very difficult to be confident in someone whose latest performance was so dismal, was so bad. Um, even if he has made different adaptations and changes and will come in, I, I'm certain Fury comes in better this time than last time. I, I personally, I wouldn't bet on someone who, who's just performed so badly. Um, secondly, I think there's, there's another value bet, which is the draw. Um, because I think uh, if the judges are going to be edged either way, I think, I've got a feeling they'd be edged in favour of Fury. And I think if, uh, if if Fury can dictate using his jab early on, he might nick a lot of rounds, close rounds. And maybe as the fight wears on and their, their feet slow and they get a bit closer to each other and then Usyk starts to outwork him. Um, but there is a chance again of it being a draw. So I think the draw is good value here. Um, certainly worth hedging your bets with the with the draw. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the blog. Um, please let me know your thoughts on the fight. I love reading other people's opinions and thoughts on a fight, and um, because I like having an open mind and I like learning other people's uh, thinking methods and what what they make of uh, certain you know aspects of it. So please let me know in the comments below. Give me a like, give me a subscribe, and I'll see you again very soon, hopefully, on the Hellraiser blog. Thanks for watching, guys. See you then. Have a good weekend. Bye-bye.